The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. This is revealed. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. This is revealed. God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful by the mercies of God uh, for being here. And I am excited about the dream interpretation today. It's going to be a lot of fun. I love, um, I want to teach you first of all a little bit and then we are going to go into it where those who are here or those who are at home, they can call in and, you know, we can hear what God is saying. But I'll tell you why I love dream interpretation. It's an opportunity for you to know that God has been talking to you. Yeah. You see, the, the biggest lie ever told in church and in Christian circles is that God only speaks to you if you're in him. No. You see, life is a chain reaction, right? Because each life is connected to the next life. So God can warn somebody that is not in Christ to do something in order to preserve those who are in him. So if, if, if the Pharaoh in Egypt did not heed the warning of God when he saw the dream with seven fat cows and they were eaten by skinny cows and it did not bother him, he would have not pursued the meaning. And if he did not find the meaning, Israel would have perished. But this guy wasn't a man of God. He never prayed to God a single day. But God still communicated to him. You see, the Bible says this, that God is so good that he causes rain to fall on the wicked and they just. It means there are benefits that God has made available to the whole human race. And then there are exclusive benefits for those who are in Christ. But every human being that goes to sleep, God has spoken to them. I'm going to say that one more time. If you have ever shut your eyes to go to sleep, the Lord has spoken to you. Now, your inability to remember dreams is you being too fleshly. It doesn't mean God didn't speak. Because every night God will talk to you. There is a revelation you will receive. But your inability to remember or to know, you just say, oh, I didn't dream, that's a lie. You are just so much flesh that you cannot recollect what happened when you are unconscious. So hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me by the Spirit of God. I'm going to teach you one way that you can provoke to dream. Uh, the people online are not ready. If you are ready, type number one. Type number one and I want you to share this and let somebody know. I was about to go ahead of me and, and say a lot of things and, and uh, forget that we have people online. Uh, if you can hear me, type number one and share this. A gazillion times. Share this as many times as you can. Share this as many, 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 many times as you can because um, this is going to be profound. Let somebody know that the prophet is live and we are going to do dream interpretation, but I want to teach you about dreams uh, a little bit. Now, I myself am guilty on this. I'm going to say something and I will say I'm guilty of it. I am not entirely guilty, <laughs> but I'm partly guilty because it's a figure of speech versus the reality of things. 
a figure of speech versus the reality of things. Now, people in deliverance won't like this, but it's the truth. There's no dreams for the, from the devil. There's never been a dream that is from Satan. Not a single one. When we say that you are being attacked in your dreams, it's a figure of speech. But that's not the entire truth. I use that too sometimes to talk to somebody so that they understand what I'm saying. But that is not the entirety of the truth. Because dreams is a revelation. Whenever you go to sleep and you dream, God is giving you a revelation of what is happening in the spirit that you're not aware of. You don't enter the spiritual realm when you are sleeping. You get a revelation of the spiritual world when you sleep. Because right now we are in the body. Our spirit is in the spiritual world. If somebody is under demonic bondage, they don't walk around and you see demons. You just see a person struggling. But if somebody has the eyes of the spirit, they will look and they will see something that is trapping this person that people with regular eyes cannot see. But that person only sees this thing when they dream at night. They see the attack, so they say, the devil comes to me at night. No, the devil already got you. But God is showing you in dreams so that you know how to pray so that you come out of it. I remember one time, I mean, this has happened a billion times. There was a certain woman that came, and I told a woman, Prophet E.J., actually, my young brother was, uh, was ministering to this woman. And I said, um, my brother, let me just say this one thing. Woman of God, there is a snake wrapped around you right now. I am seeing it with my eyes. The woman started shaking. She said, yes, I see it in my dream. I said, no, the dream is God telling you what is already wrapping you. This snake has been eating all your children. Every time you get pregnant, the serpent has been devouring your kids. Right now, if you even have one child, it's a miracle. The woman shouted, it is true, I don't have any children. My husband wants to leave me. I said, today we'll kill the snake. Yeah. But notice, God showed her a dream. God revealed what was killing things in the background. But she did not understand. She feared to sleep and to dream. Not understanding the sleeping and the dreaming was the place where the revelation was of what is happening. Can somebody hear me? Are you sure you're here? Share this, let somebody know that will let somebody know. Before we interpret dreams, I want to tell you this so that you understand. So that you can treasure dreams. You remember this. When Saul was rejected by the Lord, the Bible says extremely interesting things. It said, Saul sought the prophets. God did not speak. He tried Urim and Turim. It did not work. He tried to dream and God would still not speak. How did he know how to try to dream to hear God? You see, when Joseph was in Egypt and he was brought before the king, he said, do not all interpretation come from the Lord. Tell me your dream. So if God is the one who is interpreting all dreams, it means he's the giver of all dreams. Is somebody hearing me? If God is giving you interpretation for every dream, he's the one who is speaking. Now, in a little bit, you'll be able to call in and, and then we are going to interpret dreams and stuff. Don't worry about it. But I need you to hear this lesson so that you understand. Because if I interpret dreams and then you leave and you didn't learn how to do anything, then I have not helped you. My duty here is not just to, to reveal to you. I'm going to show you the gift. It's going to work before you. And I will show you also how to enter into the same place through the Lord Jesus and be able to do the same thing. But you need to know these principles because that's what makes you better at interpreting dreams. Just because you pray doesn't mean you get interpretation. Interpretation is a skill. 
the Bible says, and Daniel was skilled, was skilled. Listen to that word, word, he was skilled. Listen to this word. He was skilled in wisdom and interpretation of dreams, meaning to interpret dreams is a skill. So what I'm teaching you is a skill in itself. And if you have the skill, then the gift operates naturally because you all dream. Amen. You all already dream. So if I sleep and I dream, or if you sleep and you dream, somebody is chasing you, then you know spiritually there is an attack. If this and this is happening, you already know this is something God showing me in the spirit. You thank God and then you start binding. You start rebuking. If you also see something good, you thank God and you ask God to show you how to position yourself. Dreams is God communicating to you. It is a message from God. Just because a dream is scary doesn't mean it's of the devil. When the Pharaoh saw a cow eating another cow, that's a very drastic image. But it was not the devil, it was God himself showing this. I believe, I believe this with all my heart. The scarier the dream, God is trying to get more of your attention. It means you need to pay extra, extra. He's trying to wake you up. Because when you fall asleep, your soul gets an opportunity to see a glimpse of what is happening in the spirit. That is why it comes to you as dreams. So there is one principle I'm going to teach you that is positive. And there is another principle I'm going to show you that is negative. Can you do me a favor? Can you close that door over there? I can feel the breeze just coming. I'm African. If there's, even a, <laughs> if there's even wind blowing, I can feel it. Mm. Ah, God is good. Amen. LA is now Seattle, so we're, we're trying to manage. <laughs> so there's one, <laughs> there's one positive and one negative. Can you guys hear me? There is one positive and one negative. But before I continue, we can't be over 5,000 people, almost 6,000, and we only have uh, 2,300 thumbs up. Let's get the like buttons up. Then I'll continue. Let's click that button. Let's click that button. Let's, let's get the thumbs up higher so that other people will watch this also and receive deliverance. Amen. This video should have so many thumbs up by now. And keep sharing it. Let somebody know that we'll let somebody know that we'll let somebody know that we'll let somebody know that we are alive. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> it's okay, mama. <laughs> All right. Ecclesiastics chapter 5. And verse 3. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and 3. Uh -huh. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Uh -huh. And a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. One more time. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Uh -huh. And a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. One more time. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Uh -huh. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Now listen to what he's saying. A dream cometh through a multitude of business. And a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Now the word business is ian, meaning occupation or tasks. Where there is a task, God will give dreams because dreams are instructions. But where there are many words, there is a fool. So God does not give you dreams unless you have something that you need to take care of for the king. The moment you start getting consumed with doing God's work, then God is obligated to give you dreams in order to give you instructions. 
Are these amens? I don't like them. Amen. Can you read it in NIV? It's going to help somebody to understand. It's going to help somebody to understand. Uh huh. Verse Ecclesiastes 5, verse 3. Uh huh. A dream comes when there are many cares, and many words mark the speech of a fool. Dreams come where there are many what? Cares. Things to take care of. So if you're in the church and you're not receiving dreams from God, That's a problem. you don't have any cares that have to do with God. Mm. Woo. Say it again, sir. Uh, somebody may have not liked that. That's good. <laughs> if you're not consumed with the works of God, God has no business sending you instruction for what? What are you going to do with it? This is why you find people who always like to demonize men or women of God. Especially me, they love me right now. But they are just spreading the gospel more. Here's what they don't understand. You hear somebody say, oh, I just watched him and something didn't sit right with me. Something, that something may be a demon. Yeah, when demons see men of God, they don't like them. That's right. There's an emotion that is invoked in somebody that they just hate a person and they don't know why they hate them. It may be a demon. And then they'll say, oh, I had a dream that God showed me this. It doesn't work like that. God does not show... Do you, do you, do you, have you ever seen in the Bible God giving revelation of witches in dreams? Nah. No. You don't need to dream a witch for you to know somebody's a witch. That is deception in itself. If you have the spirit of God, you can measure a man by the words they speak. How many people have benefited from what is in them through Christ? You will know if somebody belongs to God or not. If Jesus is saying devils don't deliver devils or they don't cast out devils, that should already tell you if your feelings that this guy is fake, you have a demon in you. Because according to the standard of Jesus, demons don't cast out demons. They will say, but the word, if you really believe in the word, that will be your standard. So where there is a multitude of words, it marks a fool. If you ever see people who are talking too much, me personally, I don't. Every man of God that is close to me, somebody that doesn't talk much. If you look at the prophet who is here with me, is a man of a few words. If you look at his brother, a man of a few words. If you look at uh, 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 Prophet Ija, a man of a few words. If you look at Prophet Glove, he's a man of a few words. People who walk with God, they are very careful with their tongue. It's a sign of great maturity. Amen. Because where there is a multitude of words, it reveals a fool. Because where there are cares, people will not be busy talking about people. Ah, you missed it. If I am consumed by God, I have no time to see who is fake, who is real. Yes. I am busy making sure what God has given me comes to pass. Yes. God, you gave me a task to win souls. Yes. Show me the way. Show me how to do this. Show me how to do that. Show me how to do this. Show me how to do that. I will be so consumed for God to instruct me versus seeing who is not doing their job. That is their problem. I didn't hire them. Right. I didn't call them. I didn't choose them. It's none of my business. Now watch this. This is about to get beautiful. <laughs> verse 7. Can you read verse 7 for me? You. Yes. Okay. Verse 7. King James and then we'll go NIV. Okay. Uh -huh. 5 verse 7. Mm -hmm. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also divers vanities, but fear thy God. Notice this. So read it again. Yes. Verse 7. For in the multitude of dreams... And many words. Notice, people who speak too much, they also have a lot of dreams. But there is vanity. God never spoke. <laughs> but God is commanding, fear him. Don't let your mouth go ahead of you. Oh, I just dreamed that person is like this. You notice people who do that, they are talkative. <laughs> 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 
if there's too much yeah, 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 they will also have a lot of dreams. They will say, God showed me, God showed me in a dream, God showed me in a dream, God showed me. All the time. You know what I'm saying, prophet? All the time. God said, God showed me. Holy Spirit said, God said. They talk to, hey, Holy Spirit is saying a lot of things, but why don't you have instructions for your life? Why is the Holy Spirit only telling you about who is fake? Why is he not caring about your life? Being positioned for his glory. I, <laughs> I wish somebody could hear me. Why isn't the Holy Spirit consumed about your journey? And what he created you for? Why is he consumed about telling you, that one is false, that one is this, that one is this, that one is this, that one turns into da 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 da. It's like people have become transformers to you. The danger, if you want God to speak to you, especially in dreams, be somebody that doesn't talk too much. Amen. Amen. Be somebody instead who is consumed, consumed by God's desires. That is why the Bible says it like this. The Lord Jesus always said, the son does nothing unless what he has seen the father do. But when you look in scripture, you never see Jesus having a vision. Do you realize that? Everything you read about Jesus, you never saw Jesus seeing a vision. There is one thing you saw Jesus doing, sleeping. That's right. That's right. You don't hear the Lord Jesus having an open vision. When his disciples went with him on the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw him changed. It was not a vision, it was life. When the heavens opened and they heard, this is my beloved son, it is only John that heard it, not Jesus. Because you have to understand context. If Jesus is hearing it, then his father will say, you are my beloved son. Yeah. But you are hearing it from John's perspective. This is my beloved son. God is pointing him to his son. Yeah. Jesus knew he's the son. He wasn't confused about that. But John was the one who had questions. Is it you? Is it really you? Not you? Not? So he was the one in the realm of visions. I don't know if you can hear me. The Lord Jesus, you see accounts of him sleeping. But then he will tell you the son only does what the father, he has seen the father do. If you don't begin by seeing in the dream, you will never see when you're awake. Wow. Because the primary function of your spiritual eyes begin when you're sleeping. Wow. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Hear you. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. Go to verse number... Uh, Genesis chapter 2 and go to verse verse 21. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Genesis. Here's the first human being having a vision. Genesis 2 and 21. Remember, this is the first human being you're seeing have a vision, but he's having what we call the vision of the night. Hear this. Genesis 2, 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, mm -hmm. and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Mm -hmm. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. Wait, notice Adam is not awake. <laughs> oh my God. He didn't say Adam woke up. Wow. Uh, I, I'm talking to the wrong people. You people missed it. Wow. When you watch in movies, you see Adam waking up. Uh, and then he sees Eve. Say, wow. <laughs> Read it one more time. From 21. Uh-huh. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, mm -hmm. and he slept, and took one of his ribs, mm 
mm -hmm. and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Mm -hmm. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, this is now bone of my Notice, bones. Notice, he brought her. Where was she? God opened his side, took out something, made a woman, and then brought her. I thought you were doing it where he is. Wow. This is good. Okay, you see, okay, I'm doing too much. Let me... Do you get what I'm trying to say, prophet? He put the man to sleep, opened his side, took the rib, made a woman, and then brought her to him. Is he asleep or not asleep? And where was she for God to bring? I thought God was doing it there. <laughs> Spiritual things are a mystery. And if you know anything about sleeping, you start to dream when you go into rapid eye movement. They call it deep sleep. This is why also learning how to go to sleep determines if you're going to see dreams or if you're going to miss dreams when they're sent to you. Now watch this, watch this. Adam sees her and Adam says, this is the flesh of my flesh, the bone of my bone. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. My guy, how did you know you were asleep? You are more awake when you are asleep than when you are awake. Because everything that is happening in the background is in the forefront now. You are more awake when you are sleeping than when you are asleep. You know, there are times when I'm in prayer and the Lord wants to come and speak to me. Or I'm going to fall into a vision. I'll be praying and all of a sudden I'll get tired. It is like, it, it, I can't, it's like uh, I've been dragged. When I feel that I know God is going to talk to me and I will lay down on the floor and when I lay down, I'll enter into visions and then I come back. I got the revelation of what God wanted me to get. Amen. And there are times I'll just pray and God will open my eyes and I'll see. But there are times he will put me into sleep. He will put me to sleep. But when my body is laying down, I'm not actually asleep. Because you see, this world is in time. That world is on a different time zone. It operates differently from this time. And when you're on that side, you have more insight and foresight than those who are in this time. Yes. So being in, in the dream visions of God, visions of the night, it is more profound than being awake. Because anyone who can dream can be in the future. Anyone who is awake will wait for the future. Wow. Uh, this is why we ask children, what do you dream of becoming? Why don't we say, who do you want to be? Yeah. Why do we say dream? Because it is only in the dream that there are possibilities that a rib can be taken out of you and make a whole human being. Wow. It is only in the dream that you can call those things that are not as if they were. Yes. There's a lot of things people used to imagine that now we have it physically. Yes. But the revelation of those things have been there since, but the... The, the science knowledge that we have could not materialize what we had already seen that existed. Human beings are using FaceTime now. Witches have been using FaceTime <laughs> for generations. <laughs> Bamba, you know what I'm saying now. They will open a calabash, they will look, or oh, is this the person? <laughs> In water, they will look. <laughs> wow. and those, those who are born of the spirit of God wherever they will be they will see what is happening on the other side FaceTime is not a new thing people are waiting for teleportation technology ah Philip was already disappearing and appearing on another side Elijah was being taken from one side of town to the other it is not anything new 
But logical people cannot understand this. This is why God gives you dreams, so to remind you that you are spirit. Uh, I wish more people would hit the thumbs up. We are almost 7,000 people. Let's hit the, the like button. We are only at 4,000 and we are about to be 7,000 people. Let's hit more of the like button before we go into interpretation. I hope you are learning something. Yes. Amen. If you are learning something, type number one and let's get those like buttons up. Let, let's get the like buttons up. Let's get the like buttons up. Let's get the, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Before we continue, hit the like button. Before we continue, hit the like button. We need to get those uh, thumbs up as many as possible. They cannot be at 4,000 when we are at 7,000 people watching now. We need more of that. Once we get to 5,000, then I'll continue. Let's get the thumbs up to 5,000, then I'll continue. Don't worry, guys. We'll come to the dream interpretation. Let me teach you first so that now when we... If I can teach you, then it's easy for me now when we... Because, you see, dream interpretation is like, uh, is like prophesying. Yeah. So when now we get into the interpretations of dreams, it is easier. Two hundred more. Let's go. We are over seven thousand. Uh, um, one hundred and something more. Thumbs up. The more, the moment we get to five thousand, then I continue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not yet. One one hundred. <laughs> I need my likes now. Okay, there we go. Love me. <laughs> now hear this. It is paramount. It is expedient. And it is extremely important. It is paramount. It is expedient. It is very important. If I could throw another big word in there, I would. For you to dream. <laughs> Uh, X, X what? Thank you. <laughs> if you don't dream, you miss God because 90% of the times God is going to talk to you will be in dreams. Majority of your life, the easiest way God to speak to you will be in dreams. Jacob had the most important encounter with God in a dream. Solomon was given wisdom in a dream. He didn't have an open vision. He had a vision of the night where God told him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want this and this and God gave him wisdom. So 90% of the time, the Lord will speak to you. Oh, he will. He sure will in dreams. And the moment you stop dreaming is because God also has been talking to you and you're not listening. God speaks once, yet twice, but man perceiveth it not. God starts keeping those dreams in your subconscious. He opens up the ear of man and keeps those dreams and seals it to keep man from his way and to keep man from pride. When you don't dream, it's pride to God because you're not listening. Can you go to Job? Find it for me. Job 33, can you find that young lady? 13. Job 33, 13. Mm -hmm. Find it for me. I'm good. I'm good. Uh -huh. Job 33, 13. Mm -hmm. Why dost thou strive against me, uh -huh. against him? Uh -huh. For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Uh -huh. For God spake it once. Notice, God is saying you're striving with me. You're not giving any account of the matters. Remember, business. Where there is an occupation, God is obligated to give you an instruction. This is why when a man of God tries to grow their ministry or to grow their things, you know they never heard from God because you don't try to grow anything. You do what he tells you and he brings people to you. 
Increase comes from God, not from us. If you're looking for a skill to grow your ministry, you are doing it for you. You're not doing it for him. Because a man and a woman of God is consumed by what God wants. So they are not worried about how many souls will come. They are worried about drawing or throwing their, their, their net deeper. So that he can send the fish to come on. That is the style of fishing that God has ordained for the fisher of men that he has called. When Peter was told to go and fish, there was no fish. And Jesus told him, I will make you fisher of men. How did he tell him, I will make you fisher of men? His analogy is, I will talk to the fish and the fish will jump into your net and you will put them on your boat. Not, I will make you a skilled fisherman because Jesus was not a fisherman, but he was the creator of the fish. So he could speak to the fish, which represents men. So you don't need to grow anything man of God. You don't need to grow anything woman of God. Just serve God. Amen. With what he tells you to do, if you do it, it grows. Amen. Anyone who knows me personally, they know I am the most organized and organized but organized person. <laughs> plotting without plotting, but it's a plot, but it's not a plot. I, remember, I always use uh, Esther Rose as an example. And Eileen used to laugh at her all the time because... Esther will get so frustrated. Papa, what's the plan? What's the schedule? I'm like, don't worry. <laughs> Elin will just look at her and say, Essie, relax. You get it. You understand him. Not yet, but you get him. But guess what? Nothing I do fails. Never fails. It doesn't fail. Because if he tells you to do something, it works. It works. When we are filled up arenas and we fill that, not because anyone told me, it wasn't even because there was a survey, oh, you have a lot of people in that city. You have a, it's never that. I've never looked at anything like that. God just said, let's go to this city. Guys, let's plan for that city. We go and look at it, scout, we get everything together, we put it up. There are no billboards, there are no radio commercials, there's no ads on TV, nothing, or on the internet, nothing. Hey, guys, I'm coming to this city and that's it. Why? Because if he says it, He's telling me to go and throw my net deep. Amen. It will catch the fish that he has sent. That is how God works. You don't need to formulate anything. So where matters of God matter, you just have to prepare yourself because when he sends you, then the grace is also available for people to come. Because sometimes, you know, I, and I, I know I'm going on, maybe on a tangent here a little bit or I'm rambling, but, but hear me and this is going to help a pastor somewhere listening to me. Or a prophet someone li somewhere listening to me. When God has called you. His vision. Is what you must be driven by. Not your vision. The church has become. A place where you find old bones and dinosaurs. It ought never to be like that. The church should not be a graveyard. People should come to church. After one or two years, they either are serving in the house or they are going out to bring people in the house. If the same people are still sitting on the chair, there is a problem. It means they are not being equipped. It has become a graveyard. So the concept of having a big church is actually a demonic concept. Unless the turnover is also big. If there is a big church, it means there's a great crowd that has gone out. But if all the people that have been there since 1955, 2023, they are still sitting there in the chair saying, Amen, there is a problem. Maybe some of you didn't hear what I said. There's a huge problem. So stop trying to grow a church. Be concerned about saving people from hell. When you do what God wants you to do, he will send a lot of fish that need to be rescued. Amen. But if you're consumed about getting people into doors, you will become carnal and not spiritual. Because you see, the funny thing is this. Eh? I'm not good at preaching with props, but preaching with props is good because it helps certain people with their understanding. But you don't need a, a light show. You don't technically need 
any props. You don't need anything to bring people to understand or to hear God. If there is true deliverance, deliverance of the heart, deliverance of the soul, healing, transformation through the words of God, even if you're on the mountains of Tibet, people will go and find you. Because people are seeking God. They are not seeking any of all these other things. It is their burdens that are driving them to Jesus who is able to lift their burdens. So dreams become important because we have our dreams and then they are God's dreams. So when God has tasks you, tasked you with something, when God has given you responsibilities, the same God also is going to start giving you instructions. Amen. But when you start not paying heed to the instructions, now you're striving against him, you're fighting him. And God turns it into pride. He says, you're prideful because I'm talking to you and you're not listening. This is why it's saying, why are you striving with me? And then he goes, God speaks once, yet twice, but man perceiveth it not. In a vision of the night, in slumbering of the bed, and all that kind of stuff, God goes to man, opens the ear of man, and seals his instructions in there to keep man from pride, to humble you, to make you realize you need to seek him because he gave you something to do and you don't know how to do it. Becomes a problem. Can you guys hear me? Yes. It becomes a problem. Let us be people that are consumed by him. Let us be individuals that are consumed by him. Not consumed what people think of us. Yes. Not consumed by what people say about us. Let us be people who are truly consumed by him. Yes. If we are consumed by the Lord Jesus Christ, then the Lord Jesus will send those he needs to us in order to help them. Listen, whether there is one person listening to me, or there is thousands of people listening to me. It makes me no difference. Because when he called me, I never cared about who is before me. That is why I'm just me. Anyone who knows me, I've been dressing like this forever. I've had, I don't know how many hairstyles in my life. I'm just me. Because when he called me, he didn't tell me, look like this. He changed this heart to burn for him. So you're missing the instructions because you're either going ahead of God or you're not listening to God. Jumping the gun is really true and it's a real thing. There's a lot of people who went into full-time ministry. Why are you going to, who told you to go into full-time ministry? I just, you, you went into full-time ministry, you became broke. Yet there is still commerce, there's still trade in the church. A man of God should be able to have business. Amen. A man of God should be able to have other things going on outside of the work of God. If you have 10 people, you should not be in full-time ministry. For what? Amen. Why? It's a trap of the devil. And then you'll be frustrated. And then you'll be going live complaining. Why don't you people give? Don't you know the man? You become frustrated, yet God is looking at you saying, My guy, when I gave you the vision, when I gave you the dream, did I tell you to stop? My little sister remembers this, and I'm sure she does. Remember when I told you guys God gave me seven years to produce music, and then after that I wouldn't have time. He told me, I'm giving you seven years. Enjoy this time that you're making this music and doing this because it's part of the gift I gave you. Do it, but in seven years you will not have time. Listen, that seven years went like this. Wow. My little brother Chaz, is Chaz down here or is he still upstairs? Maybe he's still upstairs. Is he here? Chazzy boy, let me see you. Uh, I can't see you. Guys, stand up a little bit. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, all right. <laughs> so my, my, my young brother went to a publishing company that I'm still published by, but I don't make music anymore. Chaz, what did they tell you? <laughs> like this, this guy's the most talented guy super talented and he just left I just couldn't do it I didn't have time notice God made me full time I didn't make me full time some, some of you missed it God told me in seven years you won't be able to do it you will stop 
ah, me, I couldn't see how I was going to stop making music because music is in my blood. This is a physical gift from my great great grandfather to my grandfather to my father to my uncles to my aunts to my brothers and sisters and to myself. It's it's something that is genetic, Amen. genetically there. Ah, I couldn't see how that was possible. But guess what? I didn't have to say no to music. I just couldn't do it anymore because I'm consumed by God. It didn't. It did not measure. Yeah, that's good. It never measured. Grammy nominations, uh, number one records on Billboard, on d diamond and platinum selling records, and you just walk away. They, they thought I was crazy. I just couldn't do it. It started with, I'm not finishing projects. <laughs> just until it got to, guys, I can't. From the day God spoke to me, and God started giving me dreams, he told me to start doing Thursdays. Since 2011, I have never done a recording session on a Thursday. They were all my prophetic services until today. Amen. I've never missed a single one. Unless God sent me somewhere to serve, which is not missing something. Amen. I have never missed a single one. Amen. When God gives you a dream, it is an instruction. Is not showing you where, is not only showing you where you're going, but it's also an instruction. This is why your sleeping time should be very important. You ought to pray seriously before you go to sleep. Turn off your cell phone. If people have emergencies, let them call to Jesus, not you. You are not Jesus. Amen. Let them call 911, the fire station, or whatever. <laughs> you can't save them. If somebody died, even in the morning when you wake up, they'll still be dead. Amen. You can't change it. It sounds cold, but I'm being honest. What will you change? Hello? Yes. Prophet, is it not true? It's the truth. Imagine Jesus telling somebody, let the dead bury the dead. Ah, huh? He's saying, my father just died. Please allow me. To go and bury my father. <laughs> and Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead. Jesus, you have no love. <laughs> Are you sure the father sent you as a sign of love? Because this is not love. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Ah, Jesus would have been kicked out of the church. You have no love. What kind of love of God is that? Don't you care about my feelings? Nope. Let the dead bury the dead. Whether you go bury him now, whether you don't bury him, he's still getting buried. Your dad already died. You saw him. Let's go do the work. Amen. This way you will save many from not dying. But the man chose death. Before you go to sleep, Instead of scrolling TikTok, instead of scrolling Facebook, instead of scrolling Instagram, looking at other people's pictures. Because remember, a multitude of words is not just physical words. Your mind always going like this. That's why you guys are dreaming things that don't make sense. One minute you're eating beans, the next minute you're swimming, the next minute you're in a car. Then You can't even make sense of it because your thoughts are also like that. A double-minded person is double-minded in all their ways and such a person should not expect anything from God. Mm. Your mind has no focus, God will not talk to you. Because he knows you'll be talking to nothingness. Let me see what they did today. So they said they were going to come. They didn't show up. Oh, yeah, so you're sto on your stories you're doing. Imagine you're watching other people's stories. Instead of preparing yourself to sleep where God can meet you and tell you your story, show you your destiny. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Me, my sleeping time is the most sacred time for me. Ah, nothing is more important for me than that. I will prepare myself before I sleep. 
I will make sure I detox of anyone that maybe annoyed me in the day. I will repent where I need to repent. I will make sure my mind is so much on Jesus so that by the time I sleep, Jesus will speak to me. You have no idea how many times God has spoken to me where I was not praying, but I prepared myself to sleep. Uh, we, we, we are going to, um, let's, we are going to um, tell Uncle JT to talk to Prophet Obed to send the video of the young girl in Ghana that I'm putting through school right now. There's a young lady, Prophet. I went to Ghana to, to support my brother, Prophet Obed, when he was launching his ministry. I was so jet like I flew with Andrew, uh, Prophet EJ, and myself. Uh, my son Lee was with me. I think Van also went with me. Uh, oh, Jeremy, uh, Spider-Man went with me also. <laughs> ah, I remember how jet lag we were. It was a mess. It was terrible. And uh, they were like, all right, we landed. Okay, you're going to service. And then at tomorrow you're going to, pre I didn't even know that I'm preaching, but Prophet John, Prophet Obed's dad, and he's a mighty man of God. Uh, that's our daddy. He told me, he, he, when I'm sleeping, I fall asleep. I was up, supposed to be in church at 10 in the morning. <laughs> I woke up at 12. Thank God Africa Church is forever. <laughs> uh, I was knocked out. But at 6, around 5.36, the angel of the Lord came to me and put me in a vision of the night. Took me, I saw this woman, he gave me... Uh, the woman's first name, last name, how her husband just divorced her, how she's worried about putting her daughter to school. He gave me names and details. And when I came back to myself, I was so tired. I said, wait, you know what? I'll write it down when I wake up. And to remember, I fell asleep again. I was gone. So I had a dream from God or a vision from God. And then I went back to sleep, my regular sleep. By the time I was waking up, I was rushed to church, get to church. The prophet said, I want you to teach. Eh? <laughs> Thank God for the spirit of revelation. I grabbed my Bible. I started teaching. He said, minister to a few people. I prophesied one, two people. Eh? Then in the middle of my prophetic ministration, I remembered the, the vision of the night. I said, there's a woman. Your name is this. Your husband just left you like this. You have a daughter and you're sitting like this. I described the house. Every, the woman came out. Everyone was shocked. The woman said, I actually just changed my last name from what I was to what my husband had to my, my father's name, which is the name I used to use when I was young. And I said, listen, God did not tell me to bind a spirit, bind a demon. I know God showed me about your daughter because you're worried about school because I'm supposed to take her through school. So from now on, I'm paying for your child's school. She sent me a video uh, from, through Prophet Obed that thank you, Prophet, that now my school and all that, and she's a brilliant person. But I'm just trying to show you that when you learn how to prepare yourself, God will interrupt you to save us all. Amen. God will interrupt you. Now, I'm about to get on the phone to interpret uh, um, dreams for you. But I want you to understand this. You only get one dream. And to be honest with you, that one dream will cover every other dream. Because if you are having different kinds of dreams, but you have no interpretation, it is one dream God is using different versions to try to get you to understand, but you're not understanding. I don't know how many times people have... But I had another dream and this and this. I said, actually, they are the same dream. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a few principles to prepare you before we do dream interpretation. Number one, it is not just about what you saw in a dream. It's also what you felt while you were in the dream. What were your thoughts in the dream? If you have carnal thoughts, when you're in the vision of the night, your thoughts don't change. Your thoughts will be the same. But what you feel in the dream will be different sometimes from what you're thinking. Actually, a lot of times. An example, if you see a snake in your dream, 
It doesn't always mean that Satan is attacking you. It may be the spirit of wisdom. It may be healing. They looked at a serpent on a stick and they were healed. This is in Exodus, right? Be as wise as a what? Serpent. So if you see a snake, you will fear because in your mind you have been taught that a snake is evil. Hear me. But always ask yourself this question. Who created the snake? Satan or God? I can't hear you. God made snakes. But snakes' reputation has just been messed up. <laughs> God's creature's reputation is just ruined because of the snake in the garden. So if you see a snake... It is not always negative. That's why you need to know how it felt when you saw the snake. You saw the snake. Your mind is saying, the devil, but your heart is calm. You know it is not the devil. You need to ask yourself, who is sick in my life, family? Maybe God is sending healing. Or, oh, wait a minute. God is telling me to be wise. It is not always negative. Somebody said it's Deuteronomy chapter 13. Thank you. Thank you. It is not always what? Uh, you people in here, you are can somebody type on the, on, on, uh, online, it is not always negative. It is not always negative. You can put a snake symbol and you write, it is not always <laughs> negative. <laughs> Some bishops won't like that. <laughs> but <laughs> if he was a dragon, I would understand. A snake is just another creature. You know, some of you, some people have pet snakes. Me, I would never have one. I'm too African. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't look at somebody with a pet snake and say it's, it's the devil. It's just an animal. <laughs> Revelation church people, <laughs> Revelation nation, people have snakes <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are the best. <laughs> if you have a snake belt, they will say, you see Illuminati. <laughs> but Jesus was, Jesus, the Lord told the children of Israel, carve a snake, put it in the middle of the wilderness. Whoever looks at it will be healed. Imagine prophet if you had a service and God said, put a snake. <laughs> Ah, the church will go on fire that day. <laughs> the pool of Belteza was a pool at the temple where people touched water and they were healed. Today you do a pool in church where people can go for healing. They will say you are using marine spirits. Because the church is illiterate when it comes to spiritual things. But then the same people who believe in baptism. <laughs> it's interesting. Hey, God. Hey, Father. <laughs> Father, Father. <laughs> so, when you get your opportunity to call in, when you get your opportunity to call in, be direct. Boom, bang, 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 so that we can get so many more people on the call. We are over 8,000 people now. Let's get the thumbs up to about 6,000. It's, it's uh, 5,600. Let's get it to 6,000 or more, and then we'll begin doing dream interpretation. That way, more people can watch this and people can be delivered because we are not just having a good time. We are learning in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm here to make sure that you learn something so that you can mature and you can grow so that God can use you to help people. So many people that more souls will come to the kingdom of God. That's what I'm consumed by. I'm here to make sure that you are a benefit to those who are around you. But above all, a benefit to the kingdom of God. So we are 5,800. If you haven't subscribed to the page, make sure you subscribe. If we've been doing so well. We already are 234,000, but we need to go more. We need to hit that million. We need to come for it so that more people can hear about Jesus. It will be amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we at 5,800? Let's get it higher. Let's get it higher. 
Let's get it high. Let's get it high. Let's get it high. Let us get it higher and higher and higher. We are almost there. 5,900. A hundred more. And I just want, while people are still doing that, I want to thank all the people that are supporting the ministry. L listen to me. Your support for the ministry is so greatly appreciated. We have so many people working. There are so many projects we are working on. And we are so grateful for you. We truly are grateful for you. Uh, when you give, you are supporting the work of God. Go to, um, uh, always go to the website and give there. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, will be glorified. Thank you for supporting the work of God. I'm able to sit here and do this because of what you're doing. And I'm thankful to the Lord Jesus. All right, are we ready? Now, remember, only call on what are we using, Telegram? Make sure you use Telegram. The number is right there. Make sure you use Telegram. So I'm going to give them, uh, uh, can we run, do we have an ad for the march? For the march. Can we pray, play that real quick and then while they get ready and then we start answering calls? <laughs> march. <laughs> I have to do my mouth like that. When you call, I'm on my way I'll be there, I won't delay You know I'm always available to you To you If you send me, I will go My God, on to the I.O. You know I'm always available to you To you You know I'm available you can always call whatever you need from me you know i won't drop the ball you know you my all in all i know you the god of all so just tell me what to do i know you can never lose my storage is vacant i'm yours for the taking lord use me however you see fit when you call i'm Guys, uh, grab what you want to give to God. Grab the best uh, of what you want to give to God. And um, I want you to pray when you're giving to God. I want you to pray when you're giving to God today. And pray that God will grace you as you're giving to this work, as you're giving to Him, that whatsoever grace you need to advance 
you or to awaken you in the realm of dreams, that God will use this as a point of contact. Your connection is your collection. So I want you to grab the best that you can. The best that you can. If you can, again, let's do the number of grace. Five, five, five. Anything with, with fives. If it's five dollars, 55 cents. If it's, if it's 50 dollars and 55 cents or 55 and five cents or whatever you do. Five billion, 55 cents, however you do it. F grab something with at least three fives. And pray, God, give me triple grace in what I am trying to receive. If you are not going to do it prayerfully, please don't do it. Please don't do it. Go buy something else that you will enjoy. But if you want something from God, you can only receive it prayerfully. Prayerfully. So that when you give, you're giving from a place of prayer. You're giving from a place of understanding. Because you can't buy miracles, but you can connect to them. You can connect to a person. So I want you to do that prayerfully, go quickly, and then we'll come back and we'll pray. But you're full of compassion You're the giver of a life everlasting You're the savior of the world, Messiah All I need I find in you, provider Worthy, wonderful, awesome, power.
tears to fight your fears to time after time he has spoken to the lost and the broken ocean to ocean he is alive in a prophet Today, for the sinners and saints, he answers his children by fire. fire. All the prayers that you pray, not a one goes to waste. He answers his children by fire. Thank you for joining us tonight here on Revealed. We thank everyone that was able to call in. We pray that you have been inspired and that God has uh, revealed himself to you in a new way. Let's give everyone a hand. Amen. Amen. Um, we honor and salute our prophet, our Papa, Papa Lovi. We thank you again for taking the time and, and thank you for the vision. Let us pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, 
and Prophet Lovi. We thank you for this time that you have allowed us to come together. Thank you that we have been empowered and strengthened with the gift, or excuse me, with the talent to, to understand and interpret dreams. We thank you, Father, for your power is even in this present in this place. We thank you that your power and your presence is resonated even now on YouTube and all those that are watching, Father. And even those that were not able to get through, we ask that you give them interpretation, give them understanding of their dreams. We ask, Father God, even the aspirations that you have given them, the businesses and the families, Father, we ask that everything will come into flourishing. We thank you now that, God, that nothing will be lacking. We speak shalom over their life. Nothing lacking nothing missing and no, nothing broken and we thank you for these things in jesus name amen god bless you see you tomorrow